Good morning and welcome to that was online worship service for uh, November the 6th. I'm the Reverend Ernie Naylor and as you can see in our decoration and in the stole I'm wearing we're going to do a little bit of a, a Remembrance Day theme today. So this uh, coming Sunday is actually an anniversary service and so we have the Reverend Don McCollum coming in. He's going to preach uh, the word to us and we're having some special music and uh, I was away at a conference this week, so I did not write a sermon, so lucky me. Um, but I thought we really should have something online. And we also have our cemetery serve, or cemetery, cenotaph service in the afternoon down at the monument at two o'clock. And if you would like to come down, uh, if you come early enough, you can just park your car there and stay in the car and watch. Um, but I thought I would do just a, a mini Remembrance Day service here. This will be a very quick uh, church service per se. And uh, we'll read a bit of scripture and a few prayers and uh, say, uh, maybe read the names of the rule. So let's gather together and worship. Here's for our call to worship. People of God, worship the living God today. Remember that out of nothing, God created the heaven and the earth. Remember that God raised Jesus from the powerlessness of death to be at his right hand. Remember that nothing can stand between us and God's purpose. Behold your God who reigns now and forever. Come, let us worship our God. Please join me in a word of prayer. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God, for you are our God of glory, Lord of love. Our hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and darkness and drive the dark of doubt that is within us away. For you, your, for you, dear God, are the giver of immortal gladness who fills us with the light of day forever and ever. Amen. I said I had a, a scripture reading this morning, a short scripture reading, and I had to uh, close the Bible there, if you noticed. So it's from uh, James, and James is one of those very short books in the back of the Bible. And it's from the third chapter of James. And it's titled, uh, Two Kinds of Wisdom. So let's read James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Amen. Well, we know the words, in Flanders Fields where the poppies blow. John McRae wrote those words in Flanders Fields and he had a heavy heart. His friend Alex Helmer, a close friend, had been killed during a battle and McRae performed the burial service himself, at which time he noted how poppies quickly grew around the graves of those who died at Yeeps. The next day, he composed the poem while sitting on the back of an ambulance. In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Field continues McCray's preoccupation with death and how it stands as the transition between the struggle of life and the peace that follows. There's a strange paradox of joy and grief within our remembrance. We share the grief of the violence of the world, the tramping of soldiers, the blood and the gore of battle, the very fabric of life being tore apart. We also feel joy. The battle won, evil defeated, freedom regained. The scripture from James we read has this same tension of grief and joy within it. And James points out, James points out the problem of violence and conflict is a problem of the heart. It's a problem of the soul of a person. James uses the word selfish ambition being harbored within yourself. 
That word selfish, those words, selfish ambition, in the Greek word, it's a very rare word. Selfish ambition meaning is the pursuit of political office by unfair means. James is pointing to a human problem that our structures of society, our institutional structures, encourage and promote violence. We can see that since World War I, the war to end all wars, we've had over 200 more wars. We stand today and remember and acknowledge that all is not right in the world. We have Canadian peacekeepers fighting for freedom at this very moment. We have a war in the Ukraine and, and many other wars and conflicted areas. We have Canadian soldiers in our midst that have been broken by the trauma of war. They went to serve and have come back broken. They need our help. They need us to remember them. If you notice there's something different about Canada and its society, we are noted as peacekeepers in the world. World governments come to Canada for help and we insert ourselves in the very rips of the fabric of time and attempt to heal conflict. But why? An interesting conversation with a, an older European immigrant to Can who emigrated to Canada a few years ago. English was not a strength, but he taught himself to read and he purchased an almanac, the go-to history for this area. And he said, as I read the almanac, I was surprised at the number of young men who went to, he to war to free us Europeans during World War II. And I do not know why. Why would they have did this for us? I would suggest that part of the reason is our remembering of gathering as a community to witness the tragedy of war. I also suggest that Canada's laws were founded on Christian ethics and principles, and that that heavenly wisdom that James refers to is a fabric that is woven into our nation. The virtues of being loving, considerate, pure, full of mercy, impartiality, and sincerity are strengths of this country. We are peacemakers. We have to work hard at it. The poppy has become a symbol of remembrance of the sacrifice that our ancestors made to ensure that we have freedom for the world and that the world has peace. Hermes Day can also be a time to take stock of who we are and what we want to be as a people. We see the poppy and we remember. Then we hear the last lines of McCray's poem that points to a larger truth about remembering. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. As we remember, that remembering demands a response. Our remembering needs an active response that each of us in this great country of ours is part of. A response that's more than stopping for two minutes on November 11th. We cannot pursue peacekeeping if we're dr driven by personal ambition or desire or lack of empathy to others' plight. If we succumb to the world with ideals of distorted relationships and judgments of others, that is not life-giving. We are not remembering the soldiers who died for us. Humanity needs to look outside of itself for the answers to the problems of this world. We need to look to God and remember Him. To remember the past is to commit oneself to the future, to commit to who we want to be and who we need to be, to promise our fellow human beings that we will work untiringly for disarmament and the banishment of weapons, to work for peace, to stand up to the political culture and those institutions and point to another way forward. Let us replace violence and hate with confidence and caring as the Christian faith points to. Peace must always be the aim. Peace pursued and protected at all costs and all circumstances. We remember and we will continue to have an active remembrance. Amen. reading of the names from the rule. 
So from World War I, 1914 to 1918, William Antiknapp, Stanley Danbrook, William Danby, Waldron Dewar, St. Clair Dunn, William Featherstone, Edward Ferg, Frank Funnel, Ernest Gilmer, Charles Hales, Albert Hammond, Joseph Hanna, Samuel Henry, Clement Hone, Edward Huck, Carmen Hooser, Harry Johnson, Basil Jolly, John Keeler, Lawrence Marshall, Andrew McKeever, James McKeever, Ernest Metherall, Ambrose Moore, Lindsay Morrison, Oscar Moosley, Arnold Neville, Maxwell Park, William Perkins, Walter Prince, William Richmond, Walter Rowe, John Sottle, Walter Saywell, Roy Schatz, John Scott, Lloyd Schaefer, Alex Simpson, Wallace Simpson, Jack Smales, Lloyd Smith, Arthur Spinley, Hel Melvin Struthers, Fred Wakefield, and Frank Wilson. From World War II, 1939 to 1946, Emerson Aitchison, Marie Bell, Claude Bellsmith, Elmer Douglas, Lyle Evans, Russell Hayes, Harold Hewitt, Herbert Houston, Carl Hold, John McKay, Alex McMillan, Lawrence Partridge, John Reibling, Elwood Smith, Chris Theodorf, George Valance, and Percy Willis. Well, let's join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you this morning for life and all we have to enjoy it. We praise you for the prophets of old, listening intently for your voice and their time and speaking up for your creative will and ways of caring love. We praise you most of all for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent that we might see your face and learn your wisdom through all he told and taught. We praise you for your holy healing spirit, waking us to new ways and wisdom in this world. Gracious God, we come before you lifting up our hearts and minds to your love. Some of us are glad and happy, but some of us are bowed down with cares. Fearful to fall on their life's journey. Lord, we know that all times the way we travel is not what you have planned for us. Some of our thoughts, words, and deeds do not tell us the story of loving you and loving each other. Some of our living has hurt others and ourselves. Forgive us, merciful God, and lift us up again. Forgive us when we get stuck in negative thinking are judgmental or unkind. Forgive us when we are expecting all and giving little. Forgive us when we do not listen to your challenge and call for us, but run from you with excuses. Teach us, good Lord, your ways and lead us on this life's journey that we may reach life in all its fullness. Open our ears. Help us to see and to act as your disciples should and rejoice together in your kingdom ways. And as a community, we bring prayers before you in a moment of silence. So teach us now, good Lord, for we are here to learn from you, giver of all life and love. This we ask in Jesus' name, to whom all glory and power with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Well, I close, I've got the Legion benediction, and this is, we always recite this in unison. They shall not grow old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we 
shall remember them. Go with the blessing of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace from this day forward and forevermore. Amen.